I'm not so sure if there was somebody supposed to be up here to introduce me, but I will introduce myself and hopefully at some point in the time that my slides will come on. I'm Dr. Sangeeta Patty. I'm an OBGYN, uh, board certified, trained in Georgetown, uh, practiced routine OBGYN for quite some time and then uh, became the medical director for an international organization where I got a chance to see how natural approaches are applied to uh, medicine and that's sort of what opened my eyes and got me interested in practicing in a different way. What I want to present with you today is one of the things that people find when they come to conferences is a little bit of information here, a little bit of information there, and sometimes difficulty in actually putting it together in a case. So I'm going to move rather quickly to just show you how you can take a case and uh, I'm going to present you a little bit of didactic, but I'm going to show you about three or four cases where we bring this concept of hormonal optimization, nutritional optimization, detoxification of the bowel and liver, correction of the mind stresses and the body stresses. Um, if you sort of pay attention to the slides, I'll be moving quite quickly, but we know that Carl Sagan obviously said that science requires a strange mating of two contradictory tendencies, a willingness to consider even the most bizarre ideas, and at the same time a harsh skepticism requiring hard evidence to back up every claim, which obviously brings all of you here. When you are on your quest to try to combat inflammation, which eventually is the base of every disease that we know, uh, we know that uh, we're stuck with wondering whether or not there's data behind it. And um, there's many different forms of terminology that can be used, functional, regenerative, restorative. The idea is that we're trying to live better at any age. And uh, so the medical model that we've developed has worked over the last seven years, and that's what I want to share with you today. And uh, it is not based on evidence that comes from uh, sources like this, and nor is it based upon evidence from sources like this, a native uh, Brazilian medicine woman who I actually had the pleasure to work with, uh, who shook little skeletons on top of uh, her patients and got them better. But what I'm, the model that I'm going to present you is actually based upon uh, references in our regular literature. It's a five-point model, and I'm going to show you a couple of cases, as I said. Pretty much, you should be allowed to approach any disease that comes through your door if you have a framework. So the concept here is to get a framework. I started off easily in hormones because I am an OBGYN. Uh, people came through the door with Suzanne Summers' book after the WHI study came out. And I learned about bioidentical hormones and started looking at the data. And after a year literally devoted to looking at the data, I decided that it was perfectly reasonable and evidence-based to start practicing using bioidentical hormones. But what I realized very quickly thereafter is that without paying attention to a vitamin D deficiency under uh, 70 that is required to drive T3 into the center of the cell, or an iodine deficiency, or a zinc deficiency, or a ferritin, which although the normal range goes from 10 to 300, if it's under 90, you're not going to have optimal hormonal function. So I started paying attention to nutritional factors. The next thing that we had to pay attention to was what does the liver and bowel do? Obviously, if you go anywhere and expose yourself to Tylenol, alcohol, breathing any kind of fume, you are expecting that liver to filter it and you're expecting the intestines to dump it into your, uh, in, into the, uh, you dump it into the intestines which you expect to empty three times a day. So then we have the mind stresses and the body stresses. So this is basically the framework which I would suggest to you that whether you use this framework which is a very simplistic basic one or you use another framework you always want to have some framework with which you can approach every single condition that walks through your door so when we're talking about hormones obviously we know that the hormones start to get depleted each year from the age of 25 onwards when I have a patient come through the door and say well I'm uh, am I perimenopausal 
Well, what is perimenopausal? The hormonal status starts to decline very gradually from the age of 25 onwards. So there is no sudden spot at which you all of a sudden become perimenopausal, although there's a, a sudden definition that we use for menopause. We know that there's a change in the whole hormonal milieu, and progesterone is absolutely the very first hormone that starts to decline. This is somewhere in the mid-30s, giving us lighter sleep, more anxiety and panic attacks. We know that this is the absolute number one reason for a Prozac prescription in the mid to late 30s. Uh, mood swings and irritability, breast cysts, ovarian cysts, and fibroids. We know that progesterone is a major anti-proliferative hormone. So when it's low, we also have heavier bleeding. This is the number one cause for a hysterectomy in a woman in the late 30s, early 40s. Worse PMS, mid-abdominal weight gain, low sex drive, hot flashes. Because progesterone is your number one bone builder for osteoblastic activity, this is also the main cause of bone loss. Women obviously do not require, acquire Xanax and Prozac deficiencies when they reach the age of 38. This is a progesterone deficiency. Similarly, we know that men don't acquire medication deficiencies either. Anytime you in your practice pick up a pen to write a prescription for a blood pressure pill or for a statin pill, the question that we should be asking ourselves is, why is it that that particular parameter changed? Why is it that the LDL went up? Why is it that the fasting sugar went up? The blood pressure is going up because the pipes are stiffer. Why are the pipes stiffer? We know that we don't acquire medication deficiencies, but we do acquire deficiencies in hormones and nutrition. Every single organ in your body has a receptor site for estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, thyroid, all the brain cells, all the nerve cells, the heart cells, the bone, the muscle, the joints, the skin, the hair, and the follicles. So it's absolutely no wonder that the hormone deficiencies don't only cause a whole host of symptoms, which you can see on the left side in women, but it also causes degeneration of all the organs because they are organ supportive. So that's how we get bone decline, brain decline, vascular decline, uh, gum decline, vision decline, skin aging, so on and so forth. And in men, similarly, slow gradual onset of symptoms, loss of sexual desire, erectile dysfunction. I can tell you the very number one thing I'm seeing with men with testosterone deficiencies is anxiety and depression. In the mid, uh, mid ranges of late 30s to early 40s, it's one of the most common prescriptions is, uh, I guess sertraline is how you say it, generic, uh, Soloft, but um, that one, Really, if you start looking at the testosterone and the thyroid levels, we know that that is actually the cause of it. And once you get those things back up, you're able to 95% of the time uh, wean off of any kind of antidepressant or antipsychotic.